We have a special treat for you tonight. Again, this is our Super Tuesday business meeting. We do this meeting every other Tuesday night. And its purpose is to continue to provide the training that we feel is necessary so that we can go on to build successful freight broker businesses, not just about starting a business, but starting and building a successful business. So that's what we are doing these trainings for, and that's what you have joined us for tonight. So we have with us tonight, truck stop representatives, Alan and Nick, and they are going to be giving us an in-depth class tonight on truck stops software because we know that it's one thing to have a software, but it's entirely different to understand how it works, understand the different features so that you can get the most out of it. So that's what these guys are here tonight to help us out with to make sure that we are on track on glide path. I think we're gonna have an outstanding class tonight. These guys are certainly pre prepared. We've talked with them and we are very comfortable that they are good and ready to go. Now, <clears throat> with that said, I also want to talk about the fact that as you already know, I use Truck Stop and have always used Truck Stop since 2015. And there's a very good reason for that. I used two low boards starting out in my business. And after about a year, I decided to use Truck Stop exclusively because what I realized is that most of my calls were coming from Truck Stop, right? So I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to just continue to pay for two boards when I'm getting you know, more value out of truck stop and the rate sourcing tool, right? I was just, you know, that rate sourcing tool, which was called at that particular time, um, rate me, rate me, yeah, <laughs> yeah, rate me. You know, it was a really in-depth tool, so I enjoyed using it, and I started to use truck stop exclusively, and have always talked to you about truck stop because that's my preferred board. With that said, we're going to learn more about it tonight. And at this time, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Alan. Brandon, thank you for having us, everyone. I'm Alan Alberto. I'm a senior partner account manager over at Truckstop. We are grateful to be in good hands with Brandon and Dahl and Alliance Logistics. Grateful for you as a customer, as well as for you as a partner. Um, what I want to start with is introducing uh, truckstop.com, our main website. So Nick is going to go ahead and present the screen. So right on our website, if you hover over to resources and under partner marketplace, it's gonna take you to a number of different resources that TruckStop partners with. You're able to look at uh, different partners for insurance products, for uh, education products, for a TMS. If we scroll down to, and they're alphabetical order, so very easy to follow. If we scroll down to training and EDU, we will find Alliance Logistics as one of our training partners. And in here, you'll find exactly how to get in touch with Brandon, as well as sign up for TruckStop. And once you click through that link, it'll open a referral program that we have going on with Alliance Logistics, several of our partners. And for you, as one of Brandon's students, you get 50% off of TruckStop's load board for three months. If you scroll down, Thanks, Nick, for guiding. Uh, you'll see it's Loadboard Pro. You're getting it half off. By the time you hit two months, two to three months, you're already getting it for free for a month, right? Um, so three months, 50% off. And as you scroll down further on the page, it includes all the features that come with Loadboard Pro. So it's really all of the bells and whistles uh, of using Truck Stop, including the rates tool that Brandon spoke about. So I highly encourage you to go here take advantage of Brandon's discount for you. And then on that note, Nick, the floor is yours to dive in. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, what we're gonna be going over today is all the features that you get with Pro. Um, my name is Nick, I'm the sales engineer here at TruckStop. I've been with TruckStop for about five years and been in logistics pretty much my whole adult career life. So um, I'm gonna walk you through on not just how to use the product, but Kind of where does the data come from and um, being a new broker how are you going to go about using the platform communicating with carriers running rates all of that so we're going to dive into it and uh, hopefully there's a lot of questions at the end of this that we can go over so let's log in and here we are so yeah this is our load manager and this is where all the posting happens 
Uh, I like to normally start under the my products though and start in the rates. I think the kind of the life cycle of a load starts when you uh, you get a rate request from a shipper. They say, hey, what's your quote on this lane? You're most likely going to start in here, see what the market is doing. And then if it makes sense, you get that load. That's when you come and post it and possibly when you come over and maybe search for some trucks even. So let's go into the uh, my products and go into rate insights. So this is a updated version to RateMate like Brandon was talking about. RateMate was one of our first products uh, besides the load board. Our founder created RateMate. It was a fantastic little simple tool. Type in your origin, your destination, and it collected uh, data from our load board, what's being posted, and then we also have our own in-house uh, factoring company and have for years and years. So some of the paid data would come from our factoring company, so actual invoices that we receive. Uh, we kind of got we got rid of it, but we turned it into a better tool that uses better technology, such as machine learning and artificial intelligence. So what I mean by that is we gave it steroids, and it's actually uh, pulling in rates from a lot of different places within the truck stop ecosystem. It's not just our factoring company anymore. It's also our TMS. It's also uh, a product called Truck Stop Pay that we no longer sell, but some brokers still use it. And we also have great relationships with uh, companies, JB Hunt, Landstar, you can kind of name them. They share their rates with us and they help feed uh, some of the rate data in here. But with that said, it's one thing to just capture the data. What are you gonna do with it? And that's where we leave the, the machine to do the job. So the machine is actually looking at other things such as the current economy. It's looking at market conditions. What's the load to truck ratio? Is there more trucks in that area than there are loads or vice versa? Um, and it's also looking at what's the weight of the load? What's the length of the, the load that's required? And then also, what day is it going to pick up? Because rates can be slightly different uh, if it's picking up on a Friday compared to a Monday or a weekend. So all of those factors play a big role in how the rate is produced. And we call this a load rate, not necessarily a lane rate, because it's taking in all of those uh, little considerations, the weight and the day of pickup, for example. So. Once you want to do it, you have your little search here. Of course, recent searches. There is a ton of different equipment options in here. The top three are going to be right at the top here. You have your weight. So let's say the load is going to be 38,000 pounds. It requires a 53-foot trailer. I always recommend putting in weights, even if you don't have it. You know, put in 44,000 if you want to. Uh, pickup date, of course, we'll just stick with today. We'll say we're in. Chicago or we have a load coming out of Chicago going to Dallas and then you just hit get rate now you do have the option to do multiple too so if you wanted to add another one maybe do a little bit of a comparison is it going to change if I do it on a Monday compared to a Friday that type of thing but here's what we have so uh, this lane is I would say pretty stable um, right now our booked estimate is 2538 273 a mile this is what we estimate you booking that load for with a carrier. So not necessarily what you're gonna be charging your customer, of course, throw your margin, whatever that is on top of that. But now you have an idea of what you may be possibly spending on the load. Now, we have seen it go as low as 2520, which isn't too far from that 2538. And we have seen some go for 29, but most loads are actually going for that 2500 number. And just so you can get an idea of how much negotiation is going into it, we give you the, the posted estimate and then also a range. So the range, it's actually being posted as low as 1400, as high as 19, kind of with an average of about 16. So this, uh, to me, I've seen this lane be posted for 2000. So it seems like uh, the negotiation there, uh, they're really riling it up because they're quoting about 500 or paying about $500 more, if not more uh, than that posted rate. Now, what's really important before you just go and quote your customer is the confidence level. If you click on this word, you'll see the strength of data and then search criteria. 
I'm mainly looking at the strength of data. That is to tell you how much data Truckstop has. So this one has 9.3 and anything really above seven, eight, if you're getting close to 10, you can guarantee that we have a lot of data around this to support that number of 2538. So again, if the confidence level is lower, maybe you, I mean, take that rate, but not necessarily quote it. Maybe you should uh, go do some searching for some trucks, have some conversations, see what they're gonna be doing it for. This is your rate trend. So we can see over the last month, it has slightly gone down, not a huge drop, but we can see what it's been doing over the last month. And then this is what we have seen over the past three years. Of course, we had COVID, everything dropped down, then everything spiked up, and then fuel came in place, uh, started increasing, and then we saw rates kind of drop down. Spiked up a little bit, and then it dropped down again, uh, kind of in that February time. So really gives you a good understanding of what the market for this lane has done, especially if you're gonna be quoting any freight that has maybe a contract to it, it's gonna last over the next couple months, get a good idea of when does that lane normally drop and when does it rise up. So that's how you can use it as a standalone. You can also uh, use it while you're posting a load too. So let's kind of switch gears and we'll go over to our load manager. So just uh, like its name, this is where you can manage all of your loads. So if you have a team of people, you'll be able to see like who all of your users are and you can filter out by all your users and you can change these uh, columns up if you wanted to. You can even delete some of them if you don't care about some of them. So your screen may look a little bit different than mine. But this load has actually been posted for quite a while. Um, I'll end up removing it here, but before I do that, I wanted to cover a few things that I find important. So first off, I posted this load for 1500. It's Chicago to Dallas. Uh, I think it's a dry van. Um, as, I, as we just saw, you know, that is kind of in line with what's being posted, but not in line with what's being paid out. But I have gotten some attraction on my load. I have four views. So if I click on this, these are actually carriers that went into the load details. Uh, when a carrier does a load search on our, on our load board, they can click into the details to get more information about it, who posted it, what's the load to truck ratios. So uh, it looks like this guy, he did it twice. So must be pretty interested. Uh, looks like it was kind of right, right around the same time. So maybe it was just by accident. But um, if they're not calling you, you can reach out to them. Um, that's kind of the point of this and to tell you if there's really any attraction on it. Uh, this little uh, CPR column, uh, this is what's called the carrier performance reporting, one of those other features that you get with Pro. I'll go into it a little bit more um, later on, but uh, this is a letter grade that Truckstop is proprietary to Truckstop. We have a security team. Uh, we make sure any carrier coming to our load board, uh, one, they only have access to searching for loads and posting their truck. Uh, they cannot uh, post any loads, anything like that. So uh, what we do is we do a security check on them, make sure their authority is active, make sure their violations are all right, um, and their authority history. So we give them a letter grade. Again, I'll go into it a little bit more. But you can also make some notes. So maybe if I call John, he doesn't want it, you know, I can just go ahead and put a note in there where it looks like it was uh, Andy. So there's what I also wanted to show you. Um, another really good uh, insight to this load to see kind of how, how does it stand up to the competition. If we click on these three dots, uh, there's all, all kinds of options that we can do in here. Like I could copy this into a new load, so I don't necessarily have to start from scratch if I didn't want to. It will pull in, you know, Chicago, Dallas, dry van. I just have to select a date. Um, I'll cover some book and now stuff, but um, I wanted to go into insights. So this tool, it takes a little bit for it to gather statistics, but since it's been posted for oh, almost three hours, actually, in the first five minutes, I had 61 views. Uh, those views are just carriers scanning over my load, and not necessarily clicking on it. Um, the clicks were those four, the total detail views. Um, so you can see in the last 60 minutes, I've had 323 carriers scan over it um, and 391 in total. Now, what I really go down to, I don't really look at these graphs too much. I look at this. So my rate was 1,500. 
uh, this is a 30 day market rate. Uh, for anybody that's familiar with markets, uh, there's like 140 some markets in the United States. So this is just looking at the market of Chicago and the market of Dallas. So the rate will be a little bit different than what we saw on Rate Insights, just cause it's a, an average and it's a market rate. But what I like to focus on is what's, what's my competition doing? So the average rate when I posted was 1783. My ranking out of the origin was 232 of 1490. So most carriers are gonna do a load search, for Chicago, anywhere. Some of course are gonna put a destination on it, but if they were to do that Chicago to anywhere, I would show up 232 in line if they have it filtered by the uh, the highest rate at the top, right? So that could be why I'm not getting as many views because of my ranking and there's a lot of loads coming out of there. Um, and then of course, if you have those carriers that are looking Chicago to Dallas, then you know I fall 20 in line. So I'm halfway. Uh, so there's other customers, other brokers that are posting this load for hire. Um, they're gonna probably get that load covered a little bit faster than me being at 1500. Um, so really good insight to your load, see where everybody is and also see what's the my negotiation strength. There's 10 loads to one truck. So my negotiation strength is actually pretty poor. That kind of comes back to that rate insights that we were just looking at. Uh, this is driving that uh, negotiation. Everybody's posting it for low, but they're ending up paying 2,500 because of the load to truck ratio. So. That's your insight, but let's talk about how you can post a load. And there's a couple ways. One, you have your quick posting, which this accepts uh, zip codes and you don't really even have to use your mouse. You can just start typing in here, A6, and you can choose your origin, do your destination, do your equipment, and then pick up date. That's all we require, but I highly suggest putting in a rate, uh, a weight, and a length. Not necessarily the length so much as the weight and the, the rate, but those two big those are two big things that carriers are gonna wanna know. They wanna know how much it weighs so they can kind of get an idea how much fuel they might be burning. Um, and then of course the rate. Um, that's gonna, most carriers are going to filter their load searches by uh, the highest rate per mile or the highest rate all in. So if you don't put a rate on it, yours, yours is falling to the bottom. Um, Sometimes it's not always about getting your load at the top of the board when it comes to speed. It's more of having a good rate on there and being competitive with everybody else. So that's your quick posting. If you wanna add some more details though to it, you can do a new load post. There's this little drop down, So you can do a standard load or you can do a book it now or a bulk. So the bulk is, uh, you can do 100, 150, loads at a time. There's a little template in there that you can download um, and then you can just take all your customers freight, drag and drop them in here and it will post all 100 loads out here. Once you get them out here, if you wanted to do like a mass delete or a mass rollover, rollover means uh, maybe I didn't get this load covered for today. So I could do it on this one, for example. Didn't get the load covered today. Um, this is also something to point out. We remove every load that is, let's say, posted today at midnight. So if you did not, if I don't roll over this load, it's gonna be automatically deleted. So the next morning I'd have to come in and repost it. So if I would just wanna roll it out by three days, I can do it three days and then gotta select it and then roll over my loads. So you can do that with multiple of them. But uh, the, the refresh just means that it refreshes the, the time that it's been on the load board. Some carriers do filter by age and they wanna see the newest ones hit the board. So if you wanna refresh yeah. it, you can refresh it. Yeah, go ahead. Quick, quick question for you. So if you, if you click plus three days, does it automatically roll over yep. every day yeah. or do you still have to? No, yeah, it will push it out and I'll do it right now. So if we do uh, three days plus three days, it should push me to the 24th. Okay. And then we'll just uh, refresh it here and you'll see your pickups on the 24th now. Got it. So okay. definitely suggest doing that. Uh, looks like I just got another view on this too. So I'll probably end up removing this cause this is a live, uh, live thing. So we don't need phone calls. Um, yeah, so <laughs> good question though. 
And then, uh, so yeah, bulk upload, the book it now. So this isn't, I wouldn't say something that is used heavily by startup brokers or newer brokers to the industry. Uh, the reason for that is because you have to build a carrier base first. Uh, a book it now load is digital freight matching. We always compare it to the buy it now button on eBay. Instead of a carrier having to call me on this load and negotiate a price, uh, you can actually post a book it now load, which automatically sends that carrier a rate confirmation if they agree to it. There's we're trying to eliminate the need for a phone call. So if everything looks good, they can just click that load and, and book it. But you have to set up a carrier base because uh, we don't just want any carrier to book your load automatically. You have to tell us who those carriers are and then we get give them access to seeing and also giving the ability for them to book that load. So I'm not gonna go too far into it, but if you do have a good carrier base, um, then give it a try and it does come with pro and you can have that access so but standard well, load it sounds like you actually have yeah. your own low board set up yeah it's kind of almost like a own low board think of like jb hunt or uh, amazon for in instance they have right. the their apps right um, and it's also kind of like a tms as well when we go over its dispatch on our on our next one uh Book it now is actually integrated with ITS Dispatch. So you can create a load in ITS Dispatch, click a button, and it sends it to the load board as a book it now load. Um, so this is, if you did it within the load board, it kind of looks like this. You got location names and addresses. Carriers are not able to see this until they actually book the load. They will only see the, the city, the state, and the, the pickup dates, everything else that they would normally see. But you can see I add in uh, reference numbers, I have load numbers, I have special information, terms and conditions. Um, there's a little bit of a setup process to it um, because you gotta formulate your rate con and put in your carriers that you will allow to book. So uh, standard posting though. Uh, so this is what it looks like. Uh, we do have a little post strength. So as I you know, talk about this one here, You'll see the more information I type in here, the more this bar will rise. Of course, you can put in uh, pickup times. You can add a stop if you have a two stop uh, or a two pick. Um, let's just say to Houston. Delivery dates, uh, and then we have our equipment, flatbed. So that's all that's really necessary, but my strength is only 45%. Um, it's above 80%, we find that you're going to have more views and more activity on it. So even if I put a dollar in here, you'll see it jumps it up to 75% because a rate's a huge mm. thing. Same with the, the weight, it jumps it up to 90%. So that's a pretty ideal load if you ha just have those two things. Here's a get rate insights. So this one, about 2000 is saying that my posted rate is a little outside of range because I put a dollar. So it's saying yeah, you should probably get that up. Uh, this is a flatbed and it's to Houston, not too far off from Dallas, but you can see that the rate is pretty uh, pretty far off from what we saw going to Dallas for a dry van. So this market is a little bit uh, more painful for the carrier side. But any other options you want to throw in here? Uh, if your load requires tarps, put that on there. Carriers want to know. Uh, they want to know if it's a team. They uh, also want to know anything else. So special information, this is just include whatever you really want in here. Um, don't necessarily put phone numbers because your phone number will populate out there so they'll know who to contact. Um, starting with a copy too, you can do that. So if I had any favorites, but if I had my recent, just click it, continue. And you'll see it puts in Chicago, Dallas, fan, 1500 all I got to do is put in a date and then post it so pretty simple um, and then of course why I put my mouse over it we do have APIs so if you have a, a third-party TMS uh, there's lots of them out there you know we have our own TMS but we do have integrations with a lot of different uh, TMSs out there. You could probably name it, we probably integrate with them. Um, so instead of necessarily having to post your load uh, from the load board directly or manually, you can just do it directly out of your whole workflow within your TMS. So 
for a um, list of all of our integrated TMSs, it lives on our partner marketplace and partner portal page. Yeah, yeah. And then you would just talk to one of our uh, account executives, account managers, they'll tell you what each TMS includes with that. And, um, and with being on Pro, you can get access to those integrations, so a little bit easier. But that's not all. This is just posting your load, looking at rates. Um, my next favorite one is searching for trucks. I, I don't know if it's my favorite, but sometimes it can be the most painful. Uh, and I usually would do this if nobody's calling on my load that I got posted. Uh, or maybe you pulled a rate with Rate Insights and you don't, you're not feeling too confident with it. Uh, call out to some carriers. So there's gonna be two different types of carriers we're gonna see here. Um, and how I do my searches may be a little bit different than anybody else, but you can do a quick one by just typing in your origin, your equipment type, and then you can do a destination if you want. You don't have to. I usually leave that out. But if you want to add uh, maybe more filters, you can come into the new search. You can change up the radius. So maybe you tried a city. There was not very many results. You can expand that radius. You can also do multiple states and areas um, or zones. So you could just choose south, southern if you wanted to, and also see a map. But Let's go here. I usually like to do a difficult one. Uh, let's say I got a load out of Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it wide open. And then we have our equipment type. Uh, we'll say flatbed. And you can do up to three in here. Um, any other trailer options, pickup dates, company specific that you're trying to do. But we'll just hit add and close. So the first set of carriers that I will see, there's only gonna be two, and I did this on purpose. I wasn't trying to find as many carriers as I possibly can because you may find yourself in this situation where you do a truck search, okay, there's only two guys. Um, one of them is available on the 24th, the other one's the 27th. So that might not be too helpful for you. But this is their company information. So you can click into them and go into their truck details. It will open up a new tab and then this just gives you more insight to uh, origin radius, 200 miles, he's got a tarp. So a little bit more detail about their truck posting. So think of it like you, you can post a load, they can post their truck saying, here's where I'm at, give me a call if you have a load that fits my needs. Um, but you got their phone number right here, you can call them right here, trailer type, are they looking for a full or LTL load? A majority are going to be looking for full, but you can find some LTL guys. Um, available date. He's only been posted up for eight minutes, so not very long. Might want to give him a call if you have a load, right? Um, it's He may have already gotten covered. He may have not. Um, it's hard to say. Sometimes they don't necessarily remove it. Um, and then the destination. So this is kind of why I put no destination. Some carriers don't put a destination. Um, and if they do, they'll put a range of states. Sometimes they'll put a specific city. My goal is to try to find anybody and everybody. So if we do like Chicago, we do Van, you'll see Cleveland, but then this guy has a whole group of states. And then of course, a majority are gonna have nothing in there. And as you can see, I can filter by you know the distance. So if I'm trying to find somebody that's right in Chicago, I can see the zeros, the 12 miles, um, Indianapolis. Where I usually go directly to is this tab right here or this column, um, HB, it stands for home base. So based on their authority, um, FMCSA, they're based out of Texas, Illinois. So if I had that load going Chicago to Texas, this might be a really good option because he's based there. So I could get a cheaper price possibly, you know, or, you know, this guy's in Illinois, he's based in Illinois. So he's looking for that front hall, if you want to call it that, you know, that head hall. Um, he's just looking to get out of his home base. Um, you can, of course, filter by that. Try to find guys that are located in that destination point. Um, again, get a cheaper rate possibly. But right next to it is CPR. So that letter grade we were talking about, um, here is a B rating. Um, it goes in 
like grade school, A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, if they are an F, if they're an E, they won't be on our load board. Um, e means that they're inactive, they have no authority, but, um, and a D rating means that they're on the fence and they could possibly be removed uh, with one violation, uh, one complaint, because we do have a report of business. Um, this is to report either a carrier or a broker. So do nice things on here um, because carriers do have the ability to report you as well. Our security team does that investigation. Uh, we don't just take everything and say, yep, that's bad, put it on the load board. We do an in-depth investigation, uh, reaching out to both parties to make sure that it was valid or not valid. But if you click on this, you'll get just a, a little simple insight to them, government safety ratings. Uh, you'll see this is based off of the FMCSA. And then we see he's a modest risk. There could be a couple of things that play into this B rating. Uh, one of the biggest ones I would say is a carrier that has their authority for less than one year. They will automatically be a B. Now, if that carrier in their first year gets a violation, several violations, or if he has his authority revoked and then he reactivates it, that could potentially lower him to a C. Um, it, so there's a lot of other little things that go into this letter grade. We don't just, here's a B, you're good to go. Um, but once they get to that year mark, if everything is clean, they've kept a clean authority. So this guy looks like he just has common authority. It was activated in April. So he is, um, it was activated, but cleared up, cleared up. So it could be something else because he hasn't had his authority revoked. But if we go into CSAs, we can see he's got some hours of service issues. So that could have potentially um, moved him down to that B rating. We don't necessarily say this is exactly why he is a B rating. It's kind of your due diligence to uh, look into him. Um, and it gives you a quick screenshot. This guy doesn't have any uh, good or bad remarks filed against him. But if he did, they would be under here. So you'd be able to read them and see what those remarks were whether they're good or bad. Some carriers have this, and he doesn't. Um, it's really up to the carrier. They have to go into their profile and fill it in, but it gives you some insight to what lanes they like to run, um, if they have any hazmat certification, what kind of equipment, uh, but it's all dependent on the carrier actually doing it in their profile. And then of course, some insurance and AM best ratings. And you can also go into the FMCSA by clicking this. So that's a, it's cool it, that you can use it right here. But if a carrier had a bad, bad remark, how long does it remain and how, how do they overcome that remark? Uh, well, we do that investigation, which, so let's say a broker reports a carrier and there's a couple reasons why they can report a carrier. Actually, it's just a bad report or a good one. Um, for the brokers, it's a little bit different. Uh, there's like non-payment complaints, but we will reach out to the carrier and get his take on what happened. Uh, really depends on the scenario, right? We would keep it on there for at least a year. Um, you can see when we go back in here over, well, it will be uh, for really ever, um, over 365 days. Could they rebuttal it? Uh, you know, I don't have the answer on that one. I do know that we're not just going to post it. So we had done our investigation, right? Um, we gave we gave you that time to rebuttal it. Um, we do have that security team though, so uh, we do have carriers that can email us and, and talk it through and might come to a conclusion. So, yep. Thanks. You're welcome. So uh, let's get rid of this one real quick and I'll show you kind of the other. So we, we uh, called these two guys, right? None of them worked out. Uh, you can clean this up a little bit, X out of them. You can also pin them at the top if you wanted to, but there's this filter and it says hot prospects. Uh, we call this hidden capacity. This is actually carriers that are searching in that lane. So I went from having two carriers to 92. Uh, it's really good to point out that the dark gray, they're searching for loads. So uh, I made the mistake just when I was working at the brokerage, I would call these guys thinking that they were posting their truck, but really they're not necessarily posting their truck. Um, so this guy happens mm -hmm. to be posting plus searching. 
Um, so he's done a search, he posted and then he went straight into searching for loads out of Fargo. That's, um, if you look at the features um, back in here, you'll see real time updates. As soon as that carrier does that search, it pulls into here. So you'll be able to see him as soon as he does it. Of course, we're kind of, you know, closing out the night, so there's probably not too much activity happening in North Dakota right now. But um, it definitely helps increase that capacity, right? Call out to them. Maybe they didn't see your load yet. Um, maybe they did see it and they just didn't want to call you on it. You can call them and you have that upper hand now because you can dive into them. So good stuff in here. Was this tab hidden capacity, you said? Yeah, it's called uh, under filters. It's called hot prospects. We call it hidden capacity, but okay. yeah, gives you uh, searching trucks instead of just posting. Mm. Yeah, and just while we're on the topic, um, this is not a product. I do want to say that it's not a product that's included in Pro. It is included in our premium package, which doesn't have the discount necessarily, but. If you have uh, some freight that is consistent and you wanna find carriers that consistently run that lane, uh, the carrier sourcing option is great. Um, what this does, it actually looks at the activity of our carriers on our low board in the last uh, 30 days. And we have an algorithm that will tell you who actually posts or searches or does both the most in that lane. Um, so it's really, a pretty nifty tool. So let's say Fargo again. It's very, uh, what it will do is it's going to give me a list of those carriers that we have seen posting or having the most activity um, in that lane within the last 30 days. It's also a 25 mile radius. So if you do have a small city and you're not getting a whole lot of results, uh, definitely increase that, uh, that or change the city maybe to a larger one that's nearby. So there we go, Fargo. Uh, let's just say Houston. Equipment options, there's flatbed, but then there's individual flatbed. Uh, there's dry van, individual types of dry vans, reefer, and then there's also uh, more. So, you know, you may not find a whole lot of carriers that are necessarily doing, um, let's say, power only posting themselves or an auto carrier posting themselves. Well, with this, you could choose auto carrier, for example, and if we've seen activity in that lane from anybody, then they're gonna be in this in here. So it's definitely more of, hey, call them up, have a conversation with them, see if this is a, a lane that they enjoy running, and uh, we're gonna give you that power. So there's actually 301 carriers in the last 30 days. Um, and this guy right here, he's based out of South Dakota, so that kind of makes sense, but he is known for doing it the most. It's in a ranking of, you know, who does it the most to least. Um, this is giving you access to exporting the top 50 as well, and it will basically be an Excel sheet of this screen because you can't copy anything. But if we click into him, we get to know him a little bit better. So his hot state, I think that's uh, Wyoming, if I'm thinking correctly, but that's where he spends a lot of his time. But um, he definitely does run this lane from North Dakota down to Houston. He does have a couple other trucks, you can see based off the FMCSA. So he has done some dry vans, so he could have a dry van trailer. It looks like he has a reefer trailer. And he's done some hot shot searches, he's done some power only searches, some step deck. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that he has all of those, because sometimes when you're doing a flatbed search, for example, you might throw in step deck because they're almost the same, right? So definitely, we're just giving you access. Here's somebody that might run this lane frequently and could be a really good option if you have some dedicated lanes instead of posting them all the time. Find carriers that want to run it. And then... Uh, Kind of in the my products, one that's not necessarily talked too much about is Credit Stop Shipper. Um, I think it's really important to know the companies that you're working with. So we actually uh, work with Ansonia, which is a credit reporting bureau, and that's where we're getting this information. Uh, let's see. So we're going to put in the company name, hit search. 
There's a couple results. Uh, we're just gonna pull all of them. But this is gonna tell you their average days to pay and then their credit score. So this is a high risk um, based on four company reports that Ansonia has received. Um, and this isn't just how quickly do they pay uh, brokers it's, or carriers. It really plays into their bills in total. Uh, how do they pay their utilities, their rent? Um, so telling you really how financially str strong they are. And then of course you can purchase an Ansonia report at uh, $7.50, so not bad. And then you can save that document. Uh, we'll do it just for the sake of this so I can show you what it looks like. But it tells you uh, or shows you a more of a their high balance, their low balance. It's loading up. There we go. So again, you can email it to yourself or print it. So just uh, their average monthly balance, their high balance. We can see uh, some trends. I'm not the, the expert on here, but their days to pay and kind of how that has gone up or down. And then risk. So yeah, when I used to show this company, they used to be fine, but uh, they have dropped down significantly over time. Um, some more just, balances and then all of this information an electric electrical wholesaler was one of the reporting their balance was 389,000 so it looks like it took them that long to pay the the total balance um, so definitely useful information um, especially if you're you know new to the industry you may not be too familiar with that that shipper um, so yeah, good information. Um, and then the last one is that carrier performance that I was talking about. It can also be accessed within my products and you can just type in their company name. So if you get a phone call from a carrier on your low posting, you can always verify them uh, by clicking in here, put in their DOT number. I don't know what that will pull. Um, there we go. And it will give you that screenshot again. So he's in A rating. Yeah, uh, I would say some last things just so you can maybe understand what the market is doing. Uh, we do have some decision tools, uh, load to truck ratio. These uh, can be somewhat hard to understand sometimes. So I'll explain it as best I can. Uh, right now, what we're looking at is uh, flatbed loads in Nevada and you just choose which state you want to look out of, of course, by that little map. So this will change, and then you choose which equipment type. And then, so what it's saying is there's actually far more trucks looking to go to New England, Northeast, East Coast, than there are loads. So it's going to give you that, is there more trucks? So right now, I have the upper hand if I'm the broker, because there's a lot of trucks and not a whole lot of loads. Um, there's 332 loads in the entire state of Nevada, 174 trucks, and then we have about 2,600 of them searching for loads. These are posted trucks, uh, like we, what we just covered, and then this is the ones that are searching uh, within that area, or searching within the, the day. So not like currently at this moment, but within the day, we've had about 2,600 of them. Um, so yeah, you can move around, choose how you would like, and then the other one is load densities. This is more just numbers telling you how many loads are picking up out of each state. And then you can choose which region you'd like to look at, um, how many loads are for flatbed. And then you can also see the number of loads dropping off in those areas, because uh, that all plays into the supply and demand. Um, but yeah, I would say that's a pretty good overview of the load board. Let me. Um, the other last piece Nick, some, is the community. Someone page. asked a question about yeah, that seven dollars and fifty cent. Is that seven dollars and fifty cent per report? The question is. It is. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yes. So yeah, it's a per transaction. Um, we only have two things that are per transaction. It's that, and the other one would be oversized rates. Uh, oversized rates is three dollars per transaction. Um, so if you do have a an oversized load, you can run that. Uh, we get data from a few carriers that specifically just run oversized rates or oversized loads. So 
yeah, good information. But yeah, you can print it off. LTL you can do whatever resource? you want. LTL resources? Is that what you asked? Yes. Uh, not, not necessarily when it comes to rates. Uh, rates in LTL are a challenge because there's a lot more that go into it than just what's it weigh. Uh, what's the pallet count? What's the commodity? Is it frozen? Is it dry? Is it this? And um, I used to just primarily move LTL, so I'm very versed in it. My um, opinion on LTL is find some carriers that know how to run LTL, um, that maybe primarily just do LTL. Um, but you can always do truck searches for LTL. You can post your load as an LTL. Um, if you go back to our page here, you'll see we have a little live uh, ticker. So there's actually about 54,000 flatbed loads currently posted which is kind of crazy. Um, and then we have about 6,700 LTL loads posted. So, but yeah, you can always throw into your truck search, for example, under the, the load size, we have partial LTL, and that will show you all the carriers that are either searching or posting for LTL. Um, I would say we're primarily going to be your truckload market, but there's definitely possibilities of finding LTL carriers on here for sure. Because sometimes uh, LTL guys will be LTL one direction, but then I used to have a lot of carriers that would do LTL out of California. They would travel all the way over to the East Coast. They would find a full truck on the East Coast to get back home into California. Um, they didn't necessarily have LTL all over the place, right? So it's just a matter of having conversations with carriers. Um, even if you don't have loads, I would say, or a shipper, start calling trucks, seeing where they like to travel, keep a little Rolodex, uh, well, probably in your TMS, you know, get them set up, but um, know where they like to run, what they like to do, do they offer any other services? Because they could just be doing a small piece of their business on the load board, but not their entire business, right? Where the spot market, so we could be just used for those back hauls and not necessarily for the, the head haul. Um, so I would say we are kind of the king when it comes to owner operators. That's really what we focus on is the smaller fleets. Of course, you will find uh, some of those larger fleets in here, but a majority of carriers using our service um, are, I think they're less than 20 trucks. I would say a majority of them are, so. Right. Yeah. Someone else asked a question. They said, um, can you find shippers on truck stops load board? No, you cannot find shippers on our load board. Uh, when you sign up, we give you access to what I just showed you, searching for trucks and posting loads. We don't give access to brokers to search for loads. Uh, there's potential in there for you calling a broker and there that doesn't necessarily go good. We do have a... Um, with RMIS, we have what's called a broker membership program. So if you purchase RMIS uh, Lite, and then you also purchase the broker membership program, which is $20, um, it comes with three things. One of those is a shipper lead list with about a thousand shippers on it with emails and contact info. And then uh, it also comes with contingent cargo insurance, which is huge. So $20 a month for contingent cargo. And then it also has a broker education program. Um, it's not a school, but it's something that I helped uh, develop. It just tells them or walks you through, you know, how to have uh, relationships with carriers and negotiate rates. And, you know, what are the things that you should be putting on your broker carrier agreement and things to look out for in the industry. But um, that's the only way with TruckStop uh, to be able to get access to shippers is through there. Do truck stop support power only loads? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the main three are gonna be the biggest ones, but power only kind of falls into that specialized. Yeah, we got power only, we do a lot of uh, hot shot, anything with like a deck is what I say. Those are kind of our, our niche markets. Um, box trucks, you know, we have a few of those. I would say power only is pretty far up there when it comes to the amount of freight and the amount of trucks that we have. Um, there's always 
the cool part about the truck searching is you could just do, I don't know, let's say California, and then you just type in PO. This will give you an idea of how many trucks are in the state of California. Oh, there's a lot. Um, there we go. So there's 82 power only trucks posted out of the state of California. <clears throat> and then uh, roughly 3,200 searching for loads or have been searching in the last uh, nine hours. Yeah. How quickly can a broker get signed up and begin using the system? The load board is, if you have everything in line, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, honestly. Um, <laughs> IT, if you get the TMS, same thing. We just walk you through a couple questions, put in the information for you. You'll have a login 10, 15 minutes. I would say the only product that is going to take uh, more than an hour is going to be RMIS because that's a, a custom website that we, we make for you guys. So that would be more like a two to three week turnaround on, on the website. But the low board, yeah, if your authority is good. And also if you've never been caught in the industry for something bad, because our security does a security review of every account. Um, so as long as you're a good citizen, yeah, you get access <laughs> quickly. Yeah. Is there a source that gives you an even more accurate rate? Is there um, a resource that gives you more accurate rate? I wouldn't necessarily say we have something that gives a more accurate rate. Uh, the the rate insights is a load level rate. Um, I see that it's very accurate if you want to go that way, but we do have another rate tool. It does use different technology. Um, it's called rate analysis. I would say it's more so used by clients that are looking to do uh, big bids. Um, its specialty is doing bulk analysis. So if you have an RFP with 100 lanes, 500, this thing can take 50,000 at a time. So um, 1,000 lanes wouldn't be anything really bad for it, but um, it's similar. Oh, I'm already logged in to another one. It's similar to Rate Insights to where you can run a one lane at a time um, if you wanted to. Let's just go in here real quick. It's outside of the low board. I do want to note that. So it doesn't come with a low board. You actually have to buy this product separately. Um, but you can see you can do single lane, just throw in your favorites over here, hit run. Um, it will give you breakdowns of you know seven day averages, 30 day averages, and then also the bulk feature. Um, so you can upload, again, however many lanes you have and I would say uh, 500 lanes takes about five minutes. So you can get a lot of data very quickly um, to make that uh, that RFP more successful. So. Someone asked a question, how do you handle double brokering? Uh, well, if you ever, I guess, get have that involved, report it. Yeah, absolutely report them, even if it's, you don't know if they're a carrier or a broker, send us an email um, to your rep, to our assurance team. We will do that investigation. And that is one of the big reasons why we don't allow uh, carriers to post loads on our load board. Um, I don't know if, if there's other load boards that do that, but that's really what double brokering is, right? You, um, you think you're gonna give this load to a carrier, that carrier turns around and gives it to another carrier uh, without having proper broker authority. So that's how we help eliminate it, is we don't give brokers access to looking at loads because you could potentially be doing a load search. Oh, that load looks good. And then go and post it yourself and give it to a carrier when it really doesn't belong to you. And also we don't let the carriers post those loads um, or search for trucks. So, yeah. Someone asked the question, how do we how do we get in contact? What's the contact information? Oh, that is a fantastic question. Um, so first, if you are, of course, with Alliance, um, definitely go to the sign up page because that's where you'll get the the discount. Um, let's see. So there's all of that, and you can just 
if you wanted to talk to a part expert and have somebody reach out to you, you can submit that form. You can just buy it right here. And then uh, our other contact information is going to be under, there is about, and then there's contact us. Our sales, customer service. But yeah, if you're wanting to get that promotion, I would uh, suggest going through this link and doing it that way. But if you want to talk to somebody and you know talk to them, they can uh, sign you up with this as well. But however you like to do it. Okay. One more I do question think it's for important you. To note, if you do want to take advantage of the discount, though, through Brandon and Alliance Logistics you need to complete this form and or do the buy now here because it links directly back to the discount. If you do it on our main.com or try and call it in, there's no way for us to link it. So we wouldn't be able to give you that discount credit. Makes sense. Okay, someone says, are there any packages for the low board and TMS system or does each system have to be purchased separate? Yeah, um, I think with this deal here, we're just doing the discount on the, the load board, nothing in regards to ITS dispatch, Alan, is the that right? The bundle with okay. ITS fee uh, and what's waived for the TMS is the implementation fee is free. Oh, yes, yes. So there is a, uh, typically, if you try to sign up with the TMS, there's going to be a $125 sign up fee. It's like a one-time fee but uh, through this, you'll be able to get that fee waived. So they are two separate products. They do two different things. Uh, yes, they can talk to each other, like the TMS does integrate with our load board, so you can post your loads from the TMS over to TruckStop. Uh, so they are priced separately to answer the question. One last question, someone says, what does uh, does truck stop have an affiliation with Ascend TMS? No, uh, we have partnership with them. Uh, we don't own them. We don't none of that. Ascend is a great partner. Um, so and a great TMS. Um, it's a great one to start off with. Again, there's a lot of TMSs out there, but um, Ascend is on our partner page. I'm sure Alan would be able to find it a lot quicker than I could. But I can you. Um, if you want yeah. to scroll down to or type in Ascend, they'll come there up. So Ascend is a great partner of ours. Um, and then we do have an opportunity with them. So they do offer, you'll see free three months of Ascend premium subscription. Uh, the other thing that we do with them is a waived uh, API fee for three users or less. So that's a yeah. relationship that we've set up with them. Yeah, with, with our TMS and with uh, Ascend, it's free to integrate the two services together, so. Okay, so you've been so gracious with your time, Nick and Alan. We Absolutely. surely appreciate you coming to the call. We got so Absolutely. much value from what it is that you shared tonight. If you have any closing remarks, Nick, will you please go ahead and make those and then we'll go with Alan and we'll wrap it up from there. Yeah, no, just thank you for having me here. It's been a pleasure showing you guys our product and looking forward to the next one uh, where we'll go into some other things. So, thanks. Don't forget about that. They're coming back, not this not this week, but next week, April 4th, for some RMIS training. Yep. Okay, Alan. Likewise, so thank you, Brandon Dahl, Alliance Logistics, for having us. Thank you to all the students who are live watching and for those who will watch in the future. Thank you for the opportunity and for letting us provide um, information regarding Truck Stop. And we're here to answer any questions. So if you want to reach out to either Brandon or to Dahl and then they can connect you with us, we're happy to help in any way that we can. We're here to be a resource for you and the success of your business. So thank you. Thank you so much. Dahl, do you have anything? No, sir, I'm good, thanks. All right, ladies and gents, I wanna say again, thank you so much for spending some of your time with us this evening. Again, I think we were blessed with a great training from Nick and Alan. Uh, there was a whole lot of information that was shared that I didn't, I wasn't aware of, so I expect that you learned something this evening. But now, of course, it's time to start applying what it is that we are learning, because learning and not applying is not gonna do a whole lot of good for you at all. So the quicker we apply, 
the better we're off we'll be. Thank you again for spending some of your time with us this evening. Our next class is April 4th and truck stop Allen won't be at that particular class, but Nick will be with us and we'll be talking about the RMIS. Again, ladies and gents, thanks. Have a wonderful night and enjoy the rest of your week.